Hi guys, it's Amy, your golf coach. Welcome to Playing for the First Time series. Today we are continuing to talk about the etiquette. We'll talk about usage of putting green and the bunkers today. As I have mentioned before, if you are a new golfer, it is the best idea to skip bunker shots like first, second, third, fourth, rounds once you get comfortable being out on the course and you're ready to give it a try then that's when you can start playing out of the bunkers but there are so many rules uh, when it comes to bunkers so I wanted to just touch up on that and also on the putting green as I've mentioned before we treat it really nicely it's an expensive grass it's hard to maintain so two things we'll talk about today let's get started subscribe like comment down below how your golf game is now back to the golf lesson in the bunkers we have two different kinds of bunkers one is called a fairway bunker where the bunker is in the middle of the fairway so you're really far away from the green and then bunkers near the green we call that green side bunkers the rules apply the same except there are rare cases if you're in like desert area or if you're in like florida area where there is a lot of raw dirt around the course then they usually just keep it as part of the golf course and we call that the wasteland or the waste bunker that has its own separate rules but we're just talking about regular bunkers not waste bunkers okay so if you're in a fairway bunker or a greenside bunker number one you cannot touch the sand unless you're making a strike at your golf ball so you can't take practice swings you will get penalized two shots according to rule 12-2b so two shot stroke if you're playing in a match play loss of a hole you can't take practice swings and hit the sand you can't lay the club down on the sand before your uh, takeaway you have to hover the club so it's not touching the sand when you're hitting a bunker shot. You can't touch behind or in front of the golf ball with the club head that's considered as testing the sand so you get penalized. However, there are different rules where if you're walking into the sand and uh, you fall and you use the club to support yourself, then that's okay. And then also if there are stones in the bunkers, it's okay to pick those out too. If you take several clubs into the bunker, it's okay to lay them down when you're hitting as long as you're not moving them around testing the sand. After you hit, you have to rake the bunkers, like, you know, make it look neat so the next player that gets in the bunkers have a decent lie. If you hit and your ball stays in the bunker, you're not allowed to rake what you just hit. That'll be considered as testing the sand and you get penalized the same way for touching the sand. So you want to rake the bunker after you're completely done. Some of the bunkers are very long. So some players have gotten penalties because they didn't realize it was just one bunker. They raked it here and then went and hit another shot. And unfortunately it was linked and it was just a one bunker. So they got penalized for touching the sand before play. So remember, no practice swings and you have to hover your club out of the bunker. Simple as that. Now, when you're on the putting green, never drag your feet because it'll leave spike marks on the greens and we don't want that. We want to always pick up our feet and never run on the putting greens. And also you don't want to take divots on the greens. Let me just show you something really fun. Okay, so a lot of golfers don't exactly know how to mark your ball when uh, your ball ends up on the green. It is good etiquette to mark your ball at all times. So let's pretend this is the whole cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we're putting to. And your ball's right here. So how do you mark this? A lot of people are not sure exactly how to mark this guy. You draw a line from the hole to the ball and then you put the marker directly behind the ball and you pick it up. And then when it's your turn again, you put it right in front of the marker in the direction of the hole and then you remove it. And sometimes when you're playing with advanced golfers, they might be like, oh, your marker is in, in my way. Can you please move it? Then you would have to use a putter to move it. They might be like, can you move it to the left of the whole cup? Then you go left of the whole cup this way, one putter head this way. And then you have to make sure to you replace it before you putt, otherwise you get penalized. So that's how you mark. So now here's the hole and here's my marker. This would be considered as my line of putt. And it is 
very rude to step on anybody else's line. So let's say I'm here and your playing partners is over here on the other side. And I had to walk around to get to my golf ball. And if I step in between the hole and her marker, then I stepped on her line, then that's really, really a not nice thing to do. You always want to go around, walk around someone else's line. If it's like 40 feet away and you can't quite walk around it, then you would have to hop over it. I would do my best to not hop. Uh, that would be my last choice. I would rather go around. But if you have to, you'd have to hop, right? And also, I have mentioned this before, make sure your shadow is not over your playing partner's line when they're putting. Pay attention to your shadows and move away. Not be moving. Don't be in their peripheral vision. Don't be standing on the opposite side of the whole cup or directly behind their target line. Those simple etiquettes are going to make you a very well-mannered golfer. Everyone's going to want to play golf with you, which is amazing. It's all about good etiquette manners. You know, you're respecting the game. Usually I would get into tending the flags and pulling the flags, but nowadays we're not allowed to touch the flags because you know, of COVID-19. So we'll just leave the flag part alone. Quick tip before we wrap up here, you want to replace your ball marks and divots on the fairways. Ball marks are on the greens, divots are on the fairways. When the ball hits the green, the ball leaves a dent in the green. You want to fix it. It would be a good idea to learn to fix it. There are divot tools that can help you fix it really easily. For the fairways, if you're hitting like irons, you will make big divots. There are usually buckets of sand in the cart. You can simply just dump that sand and step on it to help the grass grow back. Really, really a good habit to get into. So today we talked about mainly the bunker and the green. I hope you guys were able to follow along. If you have more questions, if I missed anything, let me know. Please come to my website to ask me section, leave your questions and comments there. I usually get back to you guys on those first before anywhere else. Thanks for golfing with me and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.